you know, we, we one of the things that, that has really been pissing me off is, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'll probably get you in a little bit of trouble here, is we've got beat writers laughing at the fan base because they want tougher questions asked of Mike Norvell. But the beat writers aren't freaking smart enough to understand is we want questions asked so that he can provide an answer that's full of leadership. That is what the fan base is looking for. They are broken, just like the team is broken. And they need a reason to run through a freaking wall. That's what everybody wants after last year. Everybody's run, you know, ready to run through a damn wall. And now we can't get anything but just a canned coach speak response. Everybody wants a reason to believe. And Mike Norvell refuses to give that reason. So and, and- I want to, I want to, um, and I've been tough on the, I've been tough on the beat for stuff. And I don't want to push back on there a little bit, but I will, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Cause I do agree with you just on, on a lot of the other stuff. Uh, you know, I have not, I, my booster membership is, is still going like, they're still cashing that check every month. Well, it's not a check anymore, but they're still taking that automatic deposit every month. The battles in still taking that de- automatic deposit every month. I'm not canceled those things. I certainly would not encourage anyone else to do that. Um, so I, I'm in full agreement there on the beat stuff. Here's, here's my only, I guess not issue, but like issue with that is first of all, I don't think it's the beats responsibility to hold Mike Norvell's feet to the fire in, in some regards um, because Mike Norvell is getting paid $10 million by us to, to coach a team. And I, I understand where fans come from when they talk about like wanting the beat to be a little tougher on him. But when I've seen the beat ask, and I, I really like some of the guys on the beat. I don't care for some of the other guys on the beat. Like I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a mixed bag on, on this. I'll, I'll be pretty blunt with that. Um, I'm not here to name names or pick fights or whatever, but I can just say that and be, I think that, you know, suffices. Um, when I've heard people ask questions like Irish O'Fell literally asked, and I, and I've even like, I've said negative things about war chant, right? Like I've, I've, I've dogged them some, but Irish O'Fell yesterday asked like, Hey, it is really hard for fans to get up here. It is a major expense. It is a, it is a difficult thing for fans to come to games. Why should they, even, I mean, this was a literal question. We can go, Harlan, go pull it. Why should they even come up here to the game the next two weeks? Or the, you know, like the last two weeks of the year. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's a hell of a question, man, to ask. Why should your fans even come up here? At, because And he said, because you've said you're going to make changes and you said there's going to be improvement, but they haven't seen that. So why should they even come? That's a hell of a question for a beat that won't. And you know what Mike did? Coach speaked it. Hey man, we're just we 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 want you to have this faith. And so, and and I think fans, what fans want people to do, and so I'll maybe provide some perspective here, and maybe this will help some of the fan base too. What fans want people to do is they want they want um they want Ira to be Brett Breyer when he was interviewing Kamala, right? Like he, he they want him to no 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 no. I asked you that. Well, that's just not how the, like they take the mic away from you and they give it to somebody else while Mike is answering the next question and it's like on to the next person. Like you don't really like Ira doesn't have a chance to say, "Coach, that's not what I asked you." You're I mean, I guess he could stand up and start screaming across the room, but like that's that's not really Ira's job. Ira's job is to ask the question. If he answers it, he answers it. If he doesn't, he doesn't. And so you know, they, they give the mic to the next person while Mike is answering Ira's question, most, mostly for like just sake of time. Secondly, because Ira's not, you know, what are they going to do? Shout him down, you know, and, and they get kicked out of the press conference for, for acting like me or you. So I don't know. I think there's, I think there's some um, truth to like the beat holding his feet to the little, to the fire a little more. I also think that like yesterday, Ira asked a hell of a question and Mike basically just sidestepped it. And again, what's Ira supposed to do there? Get up and start throwing stuff at him, yelling at him, you know, like this, all that and the other. And so I get it. I get both sides. I actually spoke and then I'll follow that up with this. I spoke with a guy on the Gator beat and uh, just about some of this stuff, a good buddy of mine. And I asked him, I was like, look, I want to talk about this from like a non, I want your perspective because I, you know, you're not on the FSUB asking these questions. And he said, well, with coaches, he said, our job is to gather information to be able to write stories or make content or videos or or like whatever our path is, right? Like our job isn't necessarily to 
make a coach look bad or make him answer to it. You know, like whatever. Our job is, you know, like what, what we're being paid to do by our employer, you know, is, is to gather content to write stories, this, that, and the other. And he said, when I first got here, I am, I was doing exactly what you said. I would ask all the tough questions. I would, I would, uh, try and get the gotcha moments or try and, you know, I'd know how a coach would, would look bad, this, that, and the other. And I would try and hold his feet to the fire. I had that, I had that young, exuberant, you know, youthful, like I'm going to right every wrong mentality. And he said, and what I learned was coaches legitimately would just give a zero answer, like a non-answer. Like I'd ask the best question ever. And they would just say something like, well, we're evaluating that. and We'll let you know. And by the time he was done, I would, the mic would already be out of my hand and it'd be on to the next person. So I learned that I could either ask a really tough question that was going to get no answer or I could try to ask a thought-provoking question that could actually at least give some insight to a decision that he made or a process that he's got going on or something like that. And so I do think it's a really, and I, I really sound like I'm capping for the beat here, which I, maybe I am, but it, I do oh. think it's, tough, it's, a tough, <laughs> it's a tough line for them to walk because they know that if they ask that really tough question that we all want them to ask, hey, why is... Adam Fuller not been fired. I mean, they're never going to name names like that, but they've been asking, why have you not made changes in season? Like, I do think they've been asking tougher questions here lately now that I've started to think about some of the press conferences, but I do think that they know that if they ask those tough questions, they're just going to get sidestepped. And they basically took their time to go to a press conference and, and try to get content to write articles or make videos. And the coach just basically stepped around them. And so I don't know. To me, the blame still then falls on Norvell for sidestepping the question, because there are times he is asked tough questions. Why should fans come to games? When are you going to make changes? Why haven't you fired anybody in season? Are you going to bench guys that are quitting? Somebody asked him, what did you think about your team quitting? And he said, I don't think we quit. And I'm just like, all those questions are good questions. I mean, in my opinion, I mean, I don't know the specific questions that certain people want, but I, I just think, I think it mostly falls on Norvell. And again, there are guys I like on the beat and guys I don't like on the beat. And I, you know, I, I still kind of point the blame at, at Norvell. Anyway, after my 10 minute rant, I'm well, if, you're not, if you're not getting the correct answer, then you're asking the wrong question because it's not about answering, you know, a tough question. Everything's going to be about how you word it. If you approach Norvell with, you know, look, it, it is very clear that the team is broken. The fan base is just as broken as they're very unhappy. They don't like the responses that they get week after week after week. They just feel, you know, they're being placated in a way. Um, you know, they're looking for a reason to run through a wall for you. And, and they're holding on to every word that you say in your press conferences. So can you give them a reason to, to get ready to run through that wall for you? How is that so tough? That's not a tough question. That's, so, that's not being rude or, or anything like that. That That's trying to give him a nudge of, hey, Mike, this isn't Memphis. This isn't I, Memphis. I think, this is a serious program. Yeah, I don't think I, – yeah, I certainly don't think um, – I don't think they're doing that, obviously. Like, I don't think they're, they're – um, but I think he's – you know, I don't know. I mean, to me, like, he's been saying – I do think he's been kind of answering that specifically, like what you're asking about – without even being asked like, Oh, I know what it takes to turn this around and I'm going to do it and trust this. And I've seen it done before and all that stuff. And when I hear that, like, I don't know, I don't want to hear any of that stuff. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I hate hearing all that crap. I don't know. I, I get frustrated with all the press conferences and I end up turning them halfway off. Cause I'm like, this all just sucks. But I mean, I don't know. Like I, you know, what'd you think about Iris question? I thought Iris question was the best one we've gotten this year. Like, why should Van even come up? But, now, but his answer sucked. That's a hell of a question. It, it took how long to ask that question, though? And that's the other thing. The other thing that really pisses me off is that, you know, War Chant makes you pay a service. 247 makes you pay a service. So for for one, one specific group of people who chastise and laugh at the fan base for wanting tougher questions – when they expect the same fan base to pay a monthly fee and they refuse, that, that's a pretty big problem. Yeah.
supporting show today. If you haven't signed up for our Patreon, that is a good way to support. It's patreon.com backslash DFNS. You can sign up for $3 a month. You don't have to give a lot. It just gives you access to our Discord. And um, I know that you probably right now don't want to spend money on things FSU related. There's also just a lot of nonsense that happens in there. So if you need a good distraction from this team or you want other people to... Um, kind of commiserate with patreon.com backslash DFNS. If you just like the show and you want to support, there's different levels that you can support. Um, yeah, we'd love to have you over there. Obviously, um, the, the crisis that is FSU football this year has hit our, uh, our support as, as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like, and, and I feel like if that's, you know, I mean, you know, I'll say this, I don't have the financials of any companies, but I know that I, you know, I can look at my own. <laughs> I can tell you, I, I, I don't run the same exact model that they do, but uh, yeah, I can tell you that people have certainly spoke up with their voices, whether that's frustration with the beat specifically or frustration with the team that just bleeds over to the beat. Um, you know, either way, I, you know, yeah, I think people kind of speak with their speak with their wallets. And I think they're doing that with not only the beat, not only the two, four sevens and the war chants and, and, you know, shoot our YouTube channel and our Patreon and the battles end and the boosters and everything else. Like people certainly speak with their wallets. So it all kind of comes down to the money, but I don't know. I, I just, I, I do agree that there's a, there's an art to asking a question. There's an art to phrasing things at the end of the day. Like Mike's not dumb. And anything he doesn't want to answer, he's just going to sidestep it. And that's where, like, I that's where I give the beat some grace. Is that like, man, I've heard every and and I will say this too. It's not just a Mike thing. I think there. I was talking to somebody about this the other day. I think there are like three coaches in this country that don't do coach speak, and like the other 131 do. Like this is. I don't think this is just a Mike Norvell problem. I do think this happens like everywhere in the country. And it's the most frustrating thing in the world that you can be paid $10 million a year or $4 million a year or $6 million a year, whatever the hell it is. And you just literally get to like sidestep stuff. I mean, shoot, Todd Bowles did it last night. Like every coach in America, does. the only ones that don't, let me give some credit real quick. I think Rhett Lashley doesn't do it because he's just, he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's just awesome. I spent some time around him at ACC kickoff in Charlotte. He's just the most real person. He stopped and chatted with, it was me and Chris Nee and Richie sitting there having coffee. And he stopped by and just chatted with us for five minutes. And he was telling us what he liked about his team, what he didn't like. And we weren't like on the record. We were just having coffee. What he liked about his team, what he didn't like about his team, what he liked, what he liked about other teams, guys he wishes he could have kept in the portal, guys they got in the portal, guys they missed out on the portal. Like he was just so real and just, you know, and, and I just, I love that. Number two is Kenny Dillingham. So he was here. Kenny like just absolutely owns things. And he's like, I, you know, this, that, and the other. Kenny's really good. And then the last one's retired and it was Nick Saban. And that's because he was God of this sport and he didn't have to do coach speak. Like he just, you don't like what I say? Fine. I'm still Nick Saban. Screw you. Everyone else is like a coach speak wizard. doesn't matter who they are. Like, I think Lanning's actually kind of somewhat good at it too, but he does, he doesn't, uh, you know, and Kirby's pretty, Kirby's pretty good too. I'll, I'll say that. Like Kirby does a good job, but he's kind of like for the same reason that Nick was good at it. Landing too, but like, they're not asking landing hard questions. He's nine to no. So anyway, those are my, those are my non coach speak rankings, Dillingham and Rhett Lashley and like freaking Nick Saban, you know, like everyone else. I just, I can't stand the coaching crap. There's a, 